Here is another question from one of our viewers who wanted to know how many holes you could drill through the bottom of a wall framing plate. And I think the best way to answer that would be if you're building something new or a remodeling project or any other construction project where you have an engineer on record or a set of building plans stamped by an engineer, then I would ask them However, if you don't, then I would just like to provide you with a few examples that might be approved in your area of bottom plate notches, holes that have been drilled through them, or even sections that were cut out of the framing plate. So let's go ahead and get started with this one here. We have two bathroom sinks with two two-inch lines going down, inch and a half line going up for the vent, along with four water supply pipes. Here's a situation that is in the same house. And these pipes are going through a somewhat heavy-duty structural shear wall. I can tell that by the 3x4 framing plate at the bottom and the 4x4s that would be located in between the sheets of shear panel. So these are going to be 4 foot on center so that the breaks in the OSB will break on the middle of the 4x4. And this also provides us with a good example of somebody drilling some holes in a shear wall. Next up, we have a couple of pipes in the back, but we also have a large section cut out of the framing plate, maybe about 8 or 10 inches, for what appears to be a water heater vent, showing us where you can usually cut a large section of the framing plate out. And if this is cut out on the bottom, there's a very good chance it's going to be cut out on the top plate also. Here's a wall with multiple pipes in it. And of course, we can't forget the electrician who's going to be drilling holes or notching around their conduit pipes. Another view of that here. Another view of a base framing plate where somebody filled the bottom up with concrete. And of course, you can do this as long as the pipe is wrapped with some type of a protective membrane. And you can even use cardboard for this. Another example of a pipe coming out of a concrete foundation. And I couldn't help but throw in a shear wall that does not have any pipes in it, along with another example of a shear wall that does not have any holes notched through the framing plate. And if you notice in this example here, they built a second wall so that they could install the plumbing pipes to allow the bottom framing plate in the shear wall behind this wall to remain untouched for reasons I wouldn't be able to explain. And of course, another example of the pipes coming out of the concrete for what appears to be two bathroom sinks. Now, if you're dealing with a concrete foundation, there's a very good chance you're going to have to have an anchor bolt on each side of the wall framing plate where it is separated because you have a pipe in the middle. And I think you can see the anchor bolt right here providing us with one on each side. Now this one doesn't look like it has a nut and a washer on it. And I believe most building codes need to have the bolts located within 12 inches from the edge of the bottom framing plate. And that's exactly what happened here. Looks like they have an anchor bolt that was poured into the concrete and then one that was added later. And another example of that would be here around the electrical conduit even though I don't see a bolt over here. And of course, for those of you who have been in the business long enough, you've seen something like this plenty of times where you're not going to be able to get the bolt in, or it's going to be difficult to get the bolt in, or even a framing anchor connector that could be installed after the concrete is poured. For example, maybe you would drill a hole right here and then install the new anchor. But again, you can see where this might be a little difficult so to sum everything up, I have seen multiple notches, I have seen holes, and I've seen large sections of the wall framing plate missing because they had a heating duct in two bays, a wall stud going up the center with a heating duct on this side and a heating duct on this side. For example, rectangular shaped ducting that might be three and a half inches wide by 14 and a half inches running between the lower floor or lower basement and the upper floor, also suggesting that you could cut large sections of the bottom base framing plates out in some cases because they're not doing anything structurally. 
Here is a video that one of our viewers was having a problem with dealing with a plumbing pipe that was located outside of the wall framing that was going to be used for back-to-back -back bathrooms or a bathroom on one side and a bathroom on the other side. And I will go into a little more detail about that here in a little bit. But first, I want to provide you with an example of a plumbing pipe that might not be located in an exterior wall correctly and of course this one here is located correctly however if it was outside of the wall and you could cover it with some type of a cabinet or even a small box for example a small box that might be about 12 inches tall 12 inches wide and about two or three inches protruding from the wall to cover up the plumbing if you need to and of course this is the first example that you might be able to use to solve your problem if you have a plumbing pipe located outside of the wall and you don't have anything located on the other side. For example, we don't need to move this wall in an inch or two when we could simply build some type of a protective box around it and then cover it with drywall and then of course cover it with a cabinet or if it's located behind a toilet you might be able to cover the area to where no one's ever going to see it or notice it. However, that is probably not going to be the case if you have back-to-back -to -back toilets located the exact same distance away from the vent pipe. And the toilets are going to be the main focus here and not the sink or the bathtub drains. However, this is not going to eliminate the installation of the toilet or the bathtubs. If, for example, you choose to fur out the wall instead of moving Moving it. So in this example here, we have everything located exactly where it needs to be. However, in this example, I went ahead and moved the plumbing pipe about an inch out of the wall. And with it, the toilet flange and drain pipe plumbing for both toilets, along with the rest of the plumbing for both bathrooms. And of course, you can see here where the plumbing pipe is not sticking out on this side. However, it was sticking out on the other side. And the problem the individual is dealing with was the layout of the wall framing and not an existing house. If you have an existing house, you're probably going to have problems that have already been fixed somehow. Whether they've been fixed correctly or not might not apply to this video. So here we have a situation where the builder has not framed all of the walls. And during the layout process, notice that one of the plumbing pipes was going to be sticking out of the wall on one side of the bathroom. And this was the situation that one of our viewers was dealing with. However, I needed to make this video to make my point. And that is that you can simply move a few walls. You're not just going to move this wall here because it's going to create problems for either side of the bathroom. However, it will be up to you to figure out which walls you can or cannot move. For example, we're not going to have a problem moving these walls because we're just going to make the master bedroom closet one inch smaller and this bedroom one inch longer. However, it could create problems for our hallway and even our forced air heating and cooling unit. So these are things you are going to need to figure out before, of course, and not after. So I'm going to choose to move these walls here. And like I said make this bedroom a little wider and this closet a little smaller. However, I am not going to affect the hallway. So let's go ahead and move each one of these walls one inch to this side to fix everything that we are dealing with. Now I would also like to point out that it wouldn't be a bad idea to check the rest of the plumbing. Check the distance between the center of the toilet flange and the face of the wall framing. It should be about 12 and 3 quarter inches because they use usually need to be located 12 inches away from the finished wall. Then check to make sure that you're not going to have a problem connecting either one of the bathtubs or either one of the sinks. And the reason why I'm saying that is because sometimes when you have a problem like this, you might be dealing with an inexperienced plumber or someone who might have created a problem with the location of the toilets even after you've moved the walls. And hopefully that makes sense. Been there before. 
So here you can see where we left this wall, this wall, and these walls in place and haven't affected the width of the hallways. However, have affected these areas here and then not the bathrooms because we fixed everything there. And then of course this area here and then the width of these rooms. So this is what it would look like after you have fixed the plumbing problem. However, I could not have ended this video without providing you with an example of what it would have looked like if you left all of the walls alone and chose to just fur out one of the walls. And trust me, I've been here before. I've had to deal with this nightmare. And you're usually going to end up with enough room to install the bathtub on one side. However, you're not going to end up with enough room to install it on the other side. And of course, I've seen this problem solved by not furring out the area where the tub is going to be installed and simply stopping it at the edge of the tub or back a little bit. So something like this usually won't be the end of the world if you left everything alone and chose to fur out the walls. Next up on the list will be the toilet flange location. And here you can see where we have one foot one inch on this side after we furred out the wall and enough room to install our toilet. However, on the other side we don't because after we install our drywall we're going to have about 11 and a quarter inches. And and even this isn't the end of the world because you can buy a toilet that will fit in this area. And I actually wasn't aware of this until I made a video probably about 10 or 15 videos ago where someone pointed out that you could buy toilets that will fit in a 10 inch space or a 10 inch distance between the center of the toilet and the finished wall covering that's usually going to be drywall. So. There you have it. And hopefully if I did my job correctly, you learned something from this video. And you won't just move one wall or fur out one wall if it's going to work better to help your plumber out and avoid jackhammering up all of the plumbing in here just because someone couldn't solve this simple problem by moving the wall framing before the walls were framed. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos on YouTube. And if you can't find the videos on YouTube, make sure that you visit our website to find a complete organized list of all of the videos we've made so far.